Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. It is December here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's almost winter. In January, there'll be a lot of people who will make New Year's resolutions and they'll go to the gym. Gyms will be crowded. But the thing is, people don't have to wait until the new year in order to get into a fitness regimen. Similarly, in a few months, it'll be spring. And some people, do, they'll do spring cleaning. But the fact is, if something needs to go, today is as good a day as any to get rid of those things. You don't have to wait until spring. And for example, if you have someone in your life, and you know that person is from the enemy, and actually means you no good, what are you waiting for to get rid of that person? And we take this to the Bible, by taking a look at Judas. When Judas is introduced in the Bible, right up front, it lets us know that he's the one who would betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that. But Jesus kept him around because that was a part of his destiny. But for some of you, you're trying to keep someone in your life who, similar to Judas, that person's not gonna change. But if you keep that person around, it's going to result in your demise as opposed to that person's repentance. In some cases, you may be in a relationship or you're trying to be in a relationship with a person, but the person isn't fully committed. But the more you try, the more futile it is going to be. And you may know that you're wasting your time, but you keep on holding out hope that the longer you try, the better your chance is going to be. But you may know that is not going to work. So quite frankly, if you know someone in your life is like a Judas, do not wait for the person to manifest. Do not wait for the person to do damage. Do not wait for the person to, in a sense, become the one who causes you to get nailed to a cross, to get crucified. With Christ, again, Christ knew what Judas was going to do, and he kept him around because that was part of his purpose. But for some of you, you've been down that road where someone hurt you, and quite frankly, the person didn't have to hurt you because you could have stopped it. Or if you're in a position right now where you know someone is in a position to hurt you, please put an end to it rather than waiting for something to happen. It's almost like driving a car. You're about to get in an accident, and you can press the brake at any point in time to prevent the accident, but you're going to wait until the last minute. And at that point in time, it's going to be too late. Starting in um, Matthew 10, starting in verse 1. And when he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So among those twelve was Judas. And he had power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal sickness. So Judas seemed as if he was like all the other apostles. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Who also betrayed him. Again, when you know someone's purpose in your life, it is not and it's not good. Do not wait. Cut the person out. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, Raise the dead, cast out devils, 
Freely ye have received, freely give. So if you mentioned that Judas is the one who would betray him, Judas, he probably led many people to the Lord, preaching to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Healing the sick, cleansing lepers, raising dead, casting out devils. Judas probably did all those things. And sometimes one of the worst things is when a person comes into your life and that person is seemingly a fellow Christian. But quite frankly, that person is just getting close enough to you to cause destruction because a person is actually a messenger of Satan. But again, do not wait until you make a New Year's resolution. Do not wait until it's time for spring cleaning. Get rid of the mess out of your life right now. Today is as good a day as any. But there's more about um, Judas. In John 6, verses 70 and 71, Jesus had given a hard teaching and many of his followers actually turned and walked away from him. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? So again, Jesus knew that one of them was a devil. If you know there's a devil within your midst, get rid of that devil. Get rid of those devils out of your life. One of the things about a devil, or devils, they don't come to take part. They come to take, they come to take over. So again, a devil does not come to take part, it comes to take over. That's going to ruin your life. So Jesus clearly said that one of them was a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So again, dropping a dime on Judas, that he would be the one to betray Jesus and in John 12 <clears throat> start in verse 1 then Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead there they made him a supper and Martha served but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Again, in a sense, like when you see the person with the mark of the beast in your midst, please, when the Holy Spirit of the Lord shows you someone's true colors, believe the Holy Spirit of the Lord and follow his guidance. So Judas said, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? I say again, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? There are times when people come into your life and they'll have a mask. So here Judas sounded so honorable, saying that the ointment should have been sold and the money given to the poor. However, it continues in the sixth verse. This he said, not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein <laughs> so Jesus said that amongst the twelve that one of them was a devil and he actually allowed Judas to carry the money bag with their ministry funds 
And Judas had the nerve to steal from Jesus. To steal. <laughs> Again, be very careful who you let in your midst. Be very careful who you let close to you. And when the Holy Spirit of the Lord shows you something that that person is not as good as he or she comes across as being, take the appropriate actions. Also in, um, in John 13, starting in the 21st verse. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples look one on another, doubting of whom he spoke or spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. So Jesus made it clear regarding whom the person was going to be. And when he dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So again, Jesus said the one that he dipped the sop and gave it to, and then he did that to Judas, making it clear. But would the other apostles, would the, would the other apostles perceive it? And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus, That thou doest, do quickly. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Again, I mentioned, when the Holy Spirit of the Lord reveals something to you, believe him. Do not miss it. The apostles, they missed it. Jesus said the one he gave the sop to would be the one who would betray him. And then he gave it to Judas Iscariot. But they missed it. Some of you have been in situations where the Lord pointed someone out to you as being a potentially bad influence bad agenda but either you didn't get the message or you disregarded it and you end up suffering the consequences and then in retrospect you realized how you missed it but the Lord had, had actually warned you now some people may argue that in verse 27 where it says after the sop Satan entered into him but the thing is Judas's ways created a portal for the devil to enter into him anyhow. Judas was a thief. He was robbing God. That created a portal for the devil to get into his life. It was almost like Jesus giving him the sop was a mere formality. Also one thing is, if you let someone or keep someone in your life, who is a negative influence, then it could end up bringing a devil into your life or a devil into your life. And it's a part of the reason why you want to close the doors, close the windows, seal the cracks into your life. Do not give the enemy room to enter. Also in the Gospel according to Mark, in Mark 14, starting verse 18, 
and save our count of the, the Last Supper also. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eat it with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and say unto him, One by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? Now they're all asking, which meant Judas asked too. But by that point in time, he had already consulted with the, with the high priest. Yet he had the nerve to ask, is it I? He knew what he was going to do. There are times when the Holy Spirit will show you someone's true character. But if you confront the person, that person will deny it. Which is horrible because once the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, that person is in turn trying to make the Holy Spirit look like a liar. But you have to choose if you're going to believe God or if you're going to believe a person. And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. But then there's this warning right here. And there are a lot of people who they receive this warning that if they continue doing what they're going to do, that's not going to go well for them. But they're going to do it anyhow. Jesus said, The Son of Man is in the Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for him that that man, if he had never been born. I say again, the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. You would think that at that point in time, Jesus would be like, you know what? I was thinking about doing that thing, but based on what Jesus said, I think I need to backtrack. But no, it didn't stop him. Didn't stop him at all. And also consider this, Judas had served with Jesus, possibly for the, entire, for the duration of his three and a half year ministry. But even after being with the Son of the Living God, Judas did not change his ways. Some of you are trying to play God in a sense that you're trying to change someone who refuses to repent. I say again, Judas was with Jesus for probably his three and a half year ministry, but that still did not cause Judas to change his ways. So please keep that in mind. So in, um, in Mark 14, starting the 43rd verse, And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him, lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. So Judas, at the point of betraying him, like the final act, went up and said, Master, Master, and then kissed him to betray him. How many people have gone into your life 
simply so they can get close enough to give you that kiss of death, so to speak. And with Judas saying, Judas saying Master, Master, it could be like someone claiming that they love you, but they're just trying to get close enough to destroy you. Please be careful. And then he kissed him. And I'll share another account with you regarding what happened at the moment when Judas gave Jesus a kiss. In Luke 22, starting in verse 47, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, and he with the Judas, one of the twelve, is showing that relationship that he was among them, but yet he wasn't. One of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? So even before Judas kissed him, Jesus asked him, basically, are you truly going to betray me with a kiss? But Judas did it anyhow. Like I said at the beginning, today is a good day as any to take those actions, to get rid of things and people in your life that are there, especially from the enemy, to destroy you. Sometimes people don't, don't want to do things during the winter. In a sense, they don't want to put someone out in the cold. But if you don't put someone out in the cold, you may end up out in the cold. You may end up being the one getting crucified for keeping someone or something around too long. You don't have to wait until the new year in order to make the resolution. You don't have to wait until the spring in order to do spring cleaning. Today is a great day to start the rest of your life. Today is a great day to cut things and people out of your life. That the signs are clear. Or maybe you have that feeling that by keeping the person around, it is going to cost you. And it's going to cost you dearly. It is said that hindsight is 2020. One of the things Jesus said about the Holy Spirit of the Lord is that he would show us things to come. That is foresight. Foresight it is also 2020. But a lot of times you have to pay attention. And like when it comes to interpersonal relationships, a lot of times people are basing that relationship based on a person's potential as opposed to his or her performance. Both things have to match. And if someone's been stringing you along for a while and you're waiting for things to get better, but they haven't, it may be time to make that cut. Sometimes you may have to put someone out. In other cases, you may have to leave. And if it's a relationship, and something that you need to leave. Be careful who you share your plans with. Because in some cases, if you speak with the wrong person, they may tell you, oh, wait a little bit longer. Give it a chance. But if the Lord has told you what to do, follow the Lord. Now, when I mention about relationships, it's not just about romantic relationships. When I say interpersonal relationships, it could be someone who's just a friend. The important thing is, if you know a person, 
is in your life to bring, your, bring you down, do not give the person a chance. Cut your losses sooner rather than later. God bless you.